Hello, men and women of God. Welcome to this free teaching on a strategy that the Lord has given to me called the gift activation strategy. So during my times of traveling as a missionary for almost three years now, for discipling many people and training up missionaries, preaching the word of God, doing one-on-one -on -one evangelism, speaking to a lot of people, the Lord has graced me to speak a lot about gifts, the gifts and calling of God for your life. So before we get started, I want you guys to truly, truly understand the weight of actually using and knowing your gifts without having the knowledge of why you have your gifts and why you really, really need to use them. You will not even begin to start using that gift. Hallelujah. So Jesus tells a parable in the Bible, parable of the talents, where there was someone who had two talents, someone who had five talents, and there was another who had one. And it talks about how this person who had one talent buried his talent, and even what he had was taken away from him, and the master called him wicked, and taken to outer darkness where there'd be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So in the same way, with what God has invested into our life, has given to us as gifts, has entrusted unto us to be stewards over, he expects us to use it for his glory. You don't have your gift for no reason. And when we don't use the gift that God has given us, the grace that he's put upon our life, it's almost a slap in the face to God because every good and perfect gift that he has for us comes down from heaven. And if we're saying, God, I don't want your gift. God, I don't want to use your gift. It's almost a slap in his face because it's such a beautiful thing. And when we use these gifts, we're using them to glorify him, to lead many souls to Christ. So a lot of you here, you may have not seen a lot of souls being led to Christ in your life. And a lot of the times it's because you have not really been tapping in to the grace, to the gift that God has given you. So I believe that this is really going to enlighten you guys to understand how you can use your gift, not only to lead souls to Christ in a direct way, because some of you, you're called to preach, you're called to evangelize, you're called to do all these things in a very, very direct way. But some of you, you're graced in business, you're graced to be a teacher, and God will allow you to use that grace to glorify him. And because you're glorifying him, it will lead more people to Jesus. For example, let's look at a businessman. A businessman, he may not be directly going into the streets telling people about the Lord, but he can use his finances for the kingdom and he can use his influence that he's able to speak and be around certain people to lead those people to the Lord and allow his life to be an epistle that glorifies God. Hallelujah. So the first thing that you need to do is you need to understand what gifts do you have. You need to identify the gifts that God has given you. And the way that you can do this very, very easily is asking the Holy Spirit first, number one, and just sitting there with a piece of paper with your notes, whatever, and begin to write it down. When I first did that, I thought maybe I'm going to write five things down. And the list just kept going on and on and on as God highlighted things that I didn't even realize were gifts. Now, another good way is to ask someone who's close to you. Ask someone who's lived with you, someone who's been around you for a long time, whether a mother, a brother, a sister, a wife, husband, someone who's close to you or a really close friend. Ask them and say, yo, what do you see in my life that I'm gifted in? that I might not have realized, and they'll begin to tell you some things that you can do that other people can't do. Hallelujah. Another key that you really, really need to, to understand is that the gift, the grace that God has given to your life will seem so easy. Now, this is another way to identify the gift. If you're doing something, Let's say, for example, you're working with children. And for some reason, whenever you go around children, they just automatically want to run to you. They automatically want to be around you. The smile that you put on your face and just you walking in the room attracts them to you. God has given you a gift. God has given you grace to really minister and be around children. And other people will notice that, but you might not notice that about yourself. Also, some people are graced heavily in, in giving and hospitality 
where other people might not be. We all should be giving. We all should be hospitable. But some people, that's their grace. Like they really need to operate in that. And God has called them to be extremely hospitable and very, very big givers of their time of their life. And you might not see that as a gift. But if you see that it's extremely easy for you, there's just such ease when you begin to do these things. Pay attention to it. Don't count it as nothing. Don't count it as something to, to look over. But realize that this is a grace you have. This is a gift that you have. I remember not too long ago, I was going with one of my mentors to some business meetings. He was helping people to discuss some certain things that they needed to work on. And we were at, I believe, yeah, it was a hair salon. And he was giving them some things that they needed to begin to implement that was uh, by the Holy Spirit that was going to really really help them some business models some things like that and the whole time that he was talking and telling them these things it was only the course of like two hours i believe it was like light to my eyes because i was like man all this stuff that he's teaching them i already know i could go even deeper into it and i was thinking how in the world do they not understand this how do they not know this I remember getting in the car with him after and they had blessed him with like six hundred dollars or something for two hours of his time four hundred dollars something like that and i was like how did they not know this and i would never forget what he told me he said the things that seem to be so obvious so easy so smooth to you are not for everyone else and that's where your grace stands so any area of your life where things just seem to go so smoothly, whether that's graphic designing, whether that's writing, whether that's anything, working with cars, understand that it's not easy for other people. And that means that God has graced you. He has gifted you in that area. Now you understand how to actually identify your gift. The next thing that you need to do is begin to prioritize certain gifts, to look and say, okay, which gift am I most passionate about that'll help me to serve my purpose? So, for example, let's look at Billy Graham's life. Billy Graham, he was gifted very, very much so in speaking and obviously in evangelism. Yet, he could do many more, many other things. He could teach all these other things in his life, but he didn't go and completely embrace business. He didn't go and completely jump into just teaching only. But what he did was he focused on the main gift, the main calling on his life, the thing he was most passionate about, which was doing evangelism, doing those crusades. And while he did that, it caused for every other gift in his life to begin to operate. So the thing that you're most passionate about, the gift that you're most passionate about using, begin to use this gift as you see yourself using this gift as you use this gift you'll see how the other gifts serve that gift they serve in that purpose but that one gift that you're most passionate about will make the room for you and it'll be the main thing that you're focusing on so begin to evaluate your life and even ask the lord lord show me what i'm most passionate about and your gifts that you have will reveal to you even your purpose. As you operate in your gifts, you begin to see, wow, I really, really, really need to be doing this. I feel called to do this right here. And as you serve your gift, as you serve others with your gift, God will give you vision. God will give you wisdom and show you how to increase. Hallelujah. So number three, the third thing that you need to be doing, that you need to be looking into is actually developing the character that will sustain this gift. So there's certain things, certain principles, certain things in your life that you will need to uphold depending on where you're going that will cause for that gift and for your life to be protected. Now the Bible says that a gift makes room for someone in front of great men, but character, character, this is not the Bible, but character will sustain that person. The gift makes room for them and puts them in front of great men. But imagine, uh, imagine you have this amazing gift and you're just super unorganized. You're never on time. And there's someone else who has an amazing gift, but they're extremely organized. They get things done and they have their head together. 
if this person right here is brought before the great man, they'll they'll be able to enjoy the gift because he's on time, he's excellent, they're not gonna be burdened. But if this other person comes before them, they won't even enjoy the gift. They might not even meet with the person. They might tell the person after they get there, bro, your breath stinks, you need to leave. <laughs> so you have to really, really pay attention to your character, begin to develop your character so that when you are in front of great men, when you're really operating in that gift, that your character doesn't kill you. Your character doesn't ruin the blessing of God. Hallelujah. The next thing, I'm going to get through this quickly. Number four is begin to be consistent with this gift i encourage every single one of you to read first timothy chapter four specifically at the end of chapter four apostle paul is talking to timothy a son in the faith and he's telling him to meditate on the things on the gifts that were placed in him by the by prophecy through the laying on of hands of the elders and he says to fully embrace this thing and fully embrace these things so when god's given you a gift you need to fully embrace yourself in it and what does that look like that looks like being consistent continuing to practice and train and grow talent around your gifting for example lebron james who wasn't necessarily given the gift to immediately play basketball he wasn't born and automatically he was amazing at basketball no he had a gift of his athletic ability he had a gift of hand-eye coordination he had a gift of these things and he formed a talent around the gift he formed the talent of playing basketball so someone else who might have spent the same amount of time and effort training wasn't as good at playing basketball as him because he had a certain grace on his life but he was very consistent he was training every day he was doing all of these things yet he had the gift so even though you have the gift Let's say to sing, you have to begin to train your voice. You have to begin to watch YouTube videos, maybe even get lessons on singing so that you can learn more things about how to operate in that gifting. God will only go as far as you want to go with him. So if you have a grace to play the piano, you have to really, really learn more songs, learn new chords, learn these things. But it will be a lot easier for you to do it, for you to learn it. And once you got it down, the performance will be way more beautiful because you're graced in this area. That's why one person can learn something so quickly and another person can't. So you really, really need to be consistent in these things and form a daily habit, a weekly habit, weekly schedule that actually puts in place action to use your gift for his glory so then you're constantly practicing the gifts that god has given you and you'll continue to grow in them and you'll see that as you grow in them god will bless you the bible says that a gift or a present is as a precious stone in the eyes of him who has it and whithersoever he turns he prospers so the gift that you have every single area that you turn it in it will prosper so what does this mean you need to get to work you need to begin to use it you need to activate yourself in this gift you need to begin to go and run with this gift and the last thing is patience you have to learn to be patient god wants to increase you god wants to bless you god wants to exalt you but first comes testing how much do you really care about what he's doing in your life you have to first be faithful with the little and then he will make you ruler over much so you might not see a whole bunch of fruit a whole bunch of progress but as you're faithful with that little god will make you ruler over much even um for my social media for example I just began to post consistently three days a week and the Lord was telling me to do it. But before then, I was posting a lot and I had stopped for a while because I didn't feel like I had the time or whatever. It was just excuses. Don't make excuses. Hallelujah. But I began to post consistently. And as I was consistent and faithful with the little that God was blessing to my account for me to be a blessing too, all of a sudden, a lot of people began to watch the videos and I began to grow in the gift so as you are patient 
and waiting on the Lord and being faithful with the little is where he is actually training you so that you can be prepared and ready for the much for when he exalts you you'll be ready a lot of people they don't see what people has gone have gone through when they're just being faithful with the little when they're being tested when they're being worked on they only see when they're lifted up hallelujah so be faithful with that little and take your gift so serious 